Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com. In this video, we'll talk about routing in Azure, explained in plain English with a story, and we'll be covering the following topics each in less than five minutes. How Azure routes traffic by default or system routes, how routing priorities work and how Azure selects a route, what a user-defined route is, how it is created and applied. Let's get started. Modern Zoo was a fictional company which had an Azure virtual network called Domestic Animals Virtual Network with an address space of 10.0.0.0 forward slash 60 within which they had two subnets, a cat subnet and a dog subnet. They had VM resources spun up in both the subnets. The virtual network was also connected to an on-premise network with an address space of 192.168.0.0 forward slash 16 using a site-to-site -site VPN. The modern zoo had a new CTO, Curious George. George was curious about everything that happened around him. He was amazed at how the VMs from the cat subnet are able to talk to the VMs from the dog subnet. The first response that was given was, hey, these two VMs were not able to talk to each other because, well, they're in the same virtual network. But Curious George was not one who was satisfied with superficial answers. He wanted to know how they talked and he really wanted to know. So for the sake of Curious George, let's go a level deeper and understand how these VMs are able to talk to each other. All this happens because of routing. But before we jump into the specific route, let's understand with an analogy and an example of what a route table is and how it works. Let's say you are living in New York City and you wanted to get to California. So in this case, the destination is California. So in order to get to your destination, the first hop or the next hop would be the New York City John F. Kennedy Airport, right? We'll use this analogy of a destination and a next hop throughout this video for our Azure example. Going back to George's question, by default, even without us doing anything, Azure automatically creates certain routes and associates that to every resource that is inside of a virtual network. We can see this by clicking on a VM and then choosing the network interface card associated to it and then clicking on effective routes. These set of routes which are automatically created for us are called system routes because you don't have to create them manually. In this example, we see that the address range of the virtual network that we created, that is 10.0.0.0 forward slash 16, has a route here and it has a next hop as virtual network. Well, what does that mean? The keyword virtual network means that Azure takes its auto magic routes to route between the resources inside of a virtual network. And the source here does not mean the source address. The source means how or who created these routes. In this case, it's default. So you guessed it, Azure created it on your behalf. The next question Curious George had was, how is the VM communicating back to on-prem? In this case, if we go back and look at the effective routes, we would see the following entries, where the destination is the address range of the on-premise networks, that is 192.168.0.0 forward slash 16, and the next hop is a virtual network gateway. In this case, we see the source as also virtual network gateway because virtual network gateway is what created this route for us. Remember, this is also automatically created when we create the connection. We didn't have to create this manually. Great, George's curiosity was quenched. A few weeks passed by and Modern Zoo acquired a new virtual network called Wild Animals Virtual Network with an address range of 10.1.0.0 forward slash 16, which consisted of two subnets, a lion subnet and a hyena subnet. This network was connected to the domestic animals virtual network using virtual network peering. Once again, Curious George wondered how a lion subnet can talk to a dog subnet. If we go back and look at the effective routes after the virtual network peering was set up, we now see that there is a route with the source as default because Azure created this on behalf of us and destination as the wild animals virtual network address range, that is 10.1.0.0 forward slash 16, and the next hop as virtual network peering, which is what we would expect. Similarly, you would also see a similar route on the wild animal side as well, 
which would have a destination as the domestic animal's virtual network address range and the next hop as virtual network peering. A few weeks pass by and now we have a new Zookeeper virtual appliance inside the Zookeeper subnet. Zookeeper hated this chaotic traffic mingling. He did not like the fact that wild animals could talk to domestic animals without passing through the Zookeeper. And even the fact that subnets within a virtual network could talk to each other. For example, he did not want a dog subnet VM to talk to a cat subnet VM directly without passing through the Zookeeper. But he was also reasonable in some aspects. So he defined four rules for the modern zoo organization. Rule number one, domestic animals virtual network should not talk to wild animals virtual network without passing through the zookeeper. Rule number two, no two virtual machines can talk to each other inside the domestic animals virtual network. There was an exception to rule number two though, the VMs inside the dog subnet could talk to each other without passing through the zookeeper. Rule number three, any traffic from the dog subnet to the Haina subnet should be dropped even before reaching the zookeeper appliance. So how do we accomplish this? So far, we have talked about system routes or routes that were created automatically. In order to accomplish this, let's take a look at user-defined routes. But before we look at user-defined routes, let's look at how routing priorities work inside of Azure. Let's say you have three different routes. First one destination is 10.0.0.0 forward slash 16, next stop as virtual network. Similarly, we have another route with a destination of 10.0.1.0 forward slash 24 and a next stop as virtual appliance. And we have a third route which is 10.0.1.5 forward slash 32 and a next stop as none. When you look at these routes, the route which is most specific or the longest prefix wins and takes the highest precedence. In other words, if you convert the address to binary, the address with the longest subnet mask wins. In this case, that is going to be slash 32 because that is the most specific. The next precedence is given to the slash 24 route and the least preference is given to the slash 16 route. Great, but what if all three routes were exactly the same, but they came from different sources? For example, route number one came from source default or system route, route number two came from virtual network gateway. Note that BGP routes also fall under this category. Uh, BGP is border gateway protocol through which routes are exchanged for express route connection and also in some cases side to side VPN. We'll talk about that in an another video. The third route consists of a user defined route as the source. In this case, if you observe, all three routes have exactly the same prefix. So how does Azure pick a route? Azure picks the route in the following order. The highest precedence goes to user-defined routes. The next preference is given to virtual network gateway or BGP routes. The least preference is given to the system routes. What that means is you can override any of the default routes using a user-defined routes. Great. Now that we understand this, let's go back to see how the zookeeper can accomplish his requirements using user-defined routes. The way the user defined routes are created is first a route table is created. Second, routes are added onto the route table. Third, the route table is now associated to a subnet. Remember, User-defined routes can only be associated to a subnet and not a network interface card directly or a virtual network. User-defined routes have five options for the next hop type. Let's look at each of them. Option number one is none, which means black hole the traffic. That is, if you set the next hop as none, the traffic that is destined to the destination will be dropped or black hole. In our case, we will use this for the rule number three, which is dropping the traffic from the dog subnet destined to the Haina subnet. The second next hop type is virtual appliance. What this means is when we set the next hop as virtual appliance and an IP address, the traffic gets through a network virtual appliance like the zookeeper before reaching its destination. 
in order to accomplish rule number 1 and rule number 2 we will use this as the next stop that is the address range of the wild animals virtual network and we'll provide the next stop as the ip address of the virtual appliance similarly the ip address range of the domestic animals virtual network with the next stop as the ip address of the virtual appliance we added this rule because rule number 2 specifies that no two vms inside the domestic animals virtual network can talk to each other the third next stop type is virtual network the next hop of virtual network means it takes the default azure routing we would want to use this for our exception to rule number 2 which is traffic inside the dog subnet that is two vms inside the dog subnet should just take the default azure routes and not traverse through the zookeeper because that would just cause too much burden on the zookeeper appliance the fourth option is the virtual network gateway that is specified when you want to tra- when you want the traffic to go through the virtual network gateway and the last one is internet that is the next hop you specify when you want traffic to take the microsoft backbone or the internet route by default when you create a virtual network azure creates a 0.0.0.0 forward slash 0 route to the internet this quad 0 is a special route which essentially means anything does which does not match any other rule follows this rule sort of like a catch all awesome just to recap what we discussed the first concept was how azure routes traffic by default using system routes second how routing priorities work in azure number 3 what is a user defined route and how can we use it for our advantage if you want to understand more about special cases like service endpoints and how that changes routing please check out the video i made on service endpoints by clicking on the link above thank you for watching i'll see you again in the next video